Chicago. And then you can keep letting people in here. Yeah. Uh, Portland, Oregon. Okay, let's yeah, go to the so settings and that. mute people. Okay. Who, who's, yeah. from Portland, who's from Portland, Oregon? My sister. Right here. Uh, where? <laughs> I don't see you. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm from Portland, Oregon, also. There. Boulder, uh, Colorado. All right, there's still a lot of people coming in, so we'll just give it a couple more seconds. Um, now we're muting upon entry, so we could still let them in during this. Okay, we're going to start the recording. We have started it. So what we're going to do here is this is the Constitution call. I see a lot of familiar faces that were on the first Constitution call. That was several months ago, so a lot has changed since then. So this is really, really exciting. Um, the forum for today is first, we have Annalise Smithson, which I will introduce in a moment, who will be facilitating the first half of this call. And the second half is when we're going to open up to some of those questions that a lot of you have been asking. So that was in the email. And just have an open forum to really discuss uh, what we're doing here, what we're co-creating, and what this is all about. But we're going to get a lot more into that beautiful side of this with Anna Loves and her introduction. So Anna Loves, she did her PhD into the heart of systems change. So everything transforming from where we are today and where we're going and how to get there in a really beautiful way. Um, I wouldn't say she's coined the term, but she's definitely put it out there and caused me to think about it all the time of thriveability. So what's beyond regeneration? Why regeneration is still the act of regenerating and like returning to a state of harmonious abundance, thriveability is going beyond that. And I think that's a really beautiful vision that she's holding on to and putting out the world. Um, she's also the author of Love Letters from Earth. I think that's incredibly beautiful. And we had this synchronistic moment where I figured we would do a seeds campaign where we actually, we we're calling it Love Letters to Earth. So a little bit of a different way, but. The campaign was for everyone to go to one of their more beautiful spaces that they know about on this beautiful planet and to write a love letter to our incredible earth. So that's still a campaign that I'm just remembering about now and I will put it in as a campaign request. So if all you citizens want to vote for that, feel free. Um, okay, so I'm going to pass it over to Anna Loos and that'll be, that'll be it. Hi, Anna Loos. Wonderful, thank you, thank you so much. Can you all hear me well? Yes. Yes, okay, great. And how amazing to see everyone from around the world. And that is just such a powerful statement, um, both of the time in which we are now, but also the strength of this community, because a constitution without um, a living community and a living consciousness means nothing. <laughs> in fact, we have so many of those constitutions around the world that are just being filed and they are not evolutionary. Uh, they're not inclusive. They're, they're not an, a living statement of what we really stand for. So I just want us to take a moment first to really honor, you know, this community, yourself as part of that community, what it means to be a steward. Because as Reiki was telling me that everybody who's a member of SEEDS is honored as a steward. And with a steward comes also not just rights, but especially responsibilities. Uh, in responsibility also as a vision keeper. So with that in mind, I also like us to take a moment to honor what it means that you are part of the co-creation of a constitution. How rare is that? Most of the time, it are other people who've created constitutions and we're gonna be having to live in that. And then when we want to change it, it's gonna be an awful process. You know, my background uh, originally was in fact constitutional law, international law, constitutional law. Then when I realized how our current constitutions are utterly out of touch with sacred laws, natural laws, cosmological laws, I thought, gee, this can't be, we, we really need to change that. And so I'm really thrilled that there are so many here um, who are recognizing this as well. So let's really celebrate that moment that here we are part of this um, movement making towards really stepping into stewardship, co-creating the constitutions that are alive. And I'd like to guide us into a little meditation. Uh, before I do so, I just want to go more deeply into what the architecture of the seeds, because it's called seeds, right? And if we're going in the cosmological architecture of a seed, it's going to inform a lot also in what we mean about this constitution and, and how can we evolve further the governance and the values of seats. 
So if we're looking now as a seed itself as a cosmological code. So before it was a seed, it was on a deeper level within the implicate order of life, uh, beyond space time we are talking now. Um, it was there in the form of a potential, a potency. Um, some may even go as far as saying it, it was a fractal uh, potentiality. So think of the seed as something that already exists at a deeper, more implicate level of reality. And then it comes to us in the form of a vision, an idea, a deeper urge. So if we are gonna honor all the founders here as well of seeds, and then each and every one of you will help move it forward from those founding movements, because we are still in this founding process right now together. So feel then where the deeper intention of seeds as a movement, seeds as a community, seeds as a regenerative currency, um, seeds as a strategy, seeds as a future world in becoming, seeds as the foundation for a new civilization, feel where that lives within you. How are you yourself a seed in that process? And, and how does the cosmos and the universe and the earth and life itself inform you to be such a seed for this whole new civilizational movement? Because right now there are two processes going on. One is the transformation of our current state of the world. And, and as we all know, the world isn't in a good shape right now. And two is the founding of a better future, a more beautiful world, a world that works for all of us. So we're both in the process of birthing as well as we are in the process of stewarding and supporting the default systems to falling away in a deeper healing. So in your stewardship role within seats, and this informs also how we look at the constitution, hold those both those roles. How they, do you take care of what's not working, what's falling away, what's dying, what has all these disease patterns in it, and how do you take care of what's being born through you, with you, in your care together? And how can seeds as a constitution also support that transition, that transformation? So this is really important because seeds as a currency has the potential to be a very clear beacon here as an attractor for all those degenerative currencies to kind of get an update, to learn again what it means to be a currency of life rather than a currency of death, as we're seeing so much. We're in a transition from economies of death to economies of life, living economies. Mm -hmm. So just honor that <laughs> in yourself as a seed. So coming back to that seed, the architecture of the seed is itself a cosmic code. And now feel within that, what's then the purpose of a constitution? So when we create a constitution, it's always because we want to establish something. We want to found something. We want to strengthen something. So here, it's about what's the order of reality that the seat's constitution is an acting, and embodying, sustaining, keeping alive, and stewarding. So what's that order of reality? because that's going to inform your values, the order of reality. Is it an order of reality of collaboration, of co-creation, of love in action, of compassion? All of those are qualities of being regenerative, of thriveable. But then also how as these orders of reality, how are we going to work with the very opposite of that? And the, the world isn't yet that enlightened. So what are we going to do also about all the shadow behaviors, or, or, about uh, the ego that comes in, um, and about the greed and about trying this false entitlement and the claim for power. So we have to be very aware of that, that these orders of reality that we are establishing are evolutionary, that they allow us to be awake and conscious of everything that's going on and that there is a strength in this community to develop a kind of a right way of communicating that, of being able to be transparent and honest, but without shaming, that it's safe to say, you know what, mm, that was actually a different impulsive felt within myself. I actually wanted to, you know, 
really um, strengthen my influence in seats, but maybe because I wanted to be seen as really important <laughs> rather than truly living up by the values. So there's think about this process as well. That's you know how to be truly conscious as a community, have an evolutionary response. So when we're working with a constitution, basically what we're saying is that in the field of potential, in the field of vision, in the field of aspiration, of desire, we can sense this more beautiful world. We can sense this reality that we want to embody, that we want to make real and alive. And what we need is a mechanism now for bringing that future possibility here into being. So this is what the constitution is serving. It's serving to as an attractor for those orders of reality. It also serves this constitution as an embedding for the seeds. Because when you have a seed, you need also an activation process, which is what you're building into the co-creative uh, journey of seeds. You need, after the seed is activated, you need something that can help it germinate. This is usually when you need water. When a seed is activated by fire, by passion, by willpower, saying, yes, we're going to go and do this, and we can, and we are the possible people. Now you're going to need some, some water to nourish that seed so it can germinate. Once it germinates, you need soil, you need earth, you need a community in which you plant it, and then you need to have a process for being able to take care of that. So all of that is within the thinking of what's your moral compass, what's your constitution, so that your constitution provides beautiful, clear guidelines. And that, that communication is so natural, it's so inclusive that people naturally feel attracted to wanting to be a part of this. That also that it provides a really clear process for how we resolve differences, conflicts. So there's one more thing I want to share with you and then we're going to go into this meditation. And that is that I see what's fundamental to seeds is this inclusive diversity. And that's really, really beautiful and so necessary in our world. But what's really important with evolutionary for with the diversity is that we have evolutionary coherence because what we are seeing and i want to share with you three fundamental laws that you can even model them as the laws of thermodynamics the laws of infodynamics you can cosmomimic and biomimic that and then we go into the meditation so the first law is the law of constant so in the law of constant we're seeing that in all that's changing, consciousness is primary consciousness is constant itself. So that we're having a deeper reality from where everything is emerging and where everything is dissolving into. And it's that deeper constancy that is the, the foundation for renewal. So we need that for regeneration. We need a way in our constitution, in our values, to be able to access that fundamental order of reality that is changeless. But then as soon as that comes into expression, we're going to run into the second law, which is the law of change. And you can also equate that to the second law of thermodynamics. So what we're seeing then is that the nature of life here within our universe, within the physical world, is that everything is constantly changing. So that means also how a seed's changing, how a seed's evolving. And in the nature of change, we see in this law of change two movements. You could visualize them as two spirals. One from the center, from that singularity point, will be the spiral that goes outward and expands. As it expands, it becomes more diversified and it becomes more complex. You can see this from the beginning of the Big Bang or the Big Out Breath from the origin of our universe that comes from that simplicity. And then it starts to become more complex and it starts to become more diversified. Now, also, you will see this within yourself here as a community. It's more diversified, more complex, more information. Now, nature is very intelligent. How does it deal with that complexity? It finds places of integration. It finds places of being to embody that. And it builds evolutionary coherence through collaborative strategies, co-creative strategies. When there's a breakdown, is when we start competing, we start fighting, we start dividing. But when you build into your game structure, collaboration, co-creation, setting common goals, you're building on that diversity in a really generative way. So the first spiral is going outwards, 
Then there's another spiral that we don't talk much about, and that's the inward spiral. Everything that goes outward will also have a movement of going back into the center. And that's an integrated process. That's also a process of contraction. Currently in our economic system, we think that growth only means expansion. So what we're doing through regenerative cycles and building that into the code of seeds is saying, no, it's also okay. Those moments of contractions, of integration, of going back to the center is necessary as a condition for new growth. In winter, you will see that the energy recedes, it goes inward so that in spring, new seeds can come forward. So we need also in our thinking, in our constitution, a way of designing for those principles, the outward spiral and the inward integrative spiral. What are you willing to let die in seeds for new growth? How can dying with dignity be part of the constitution as well? What are you willing to, to let go and to repurpose? How as a community do you make space for reflection so that can be learning that it's not only activity, but also it's going back, going inwards, going to that unifying movement inside. And then the third law is the law of balance. And that means from the law of balance, we're learning to be great stewards. So that's recognizing that everything in life is interdependent and that everything has a boundary. And we can see in our current world that we don't understand that law of balance very well because we're not listening to the boundaries of the systems, not the boundaries from our planet. So we are exceeding thresholds. We're not listening to the boundaries of our social fabrics so not probably not even our inner boundaries. So that third law of balance, it's like a great hoop of life that says, hey, how is it to create a world where everyone is okay? How is it to create a world where nobody is without? And that then in that third law, this is when we can work with both what's constant and unchanging, you could say eternal, as well as working with what's constantly changing in both directions, outwards and inwards. And now you become the architect of working with those three forces for the co-creation of this more beautiful world that we know is possible. And this is where I see that this constitution of seed, the governance of seeds, the game design of seeds is unique in the world. Yeah, I haven't seen any other process or community where this is as alive. So this is really, really beautiful. So with that now as background, uh, let us go to a little meditation. I'm gonna guide you into just experiencing how this all lives within you. So if you want to put up your video, you can. If you wanna just keep your video on, that's fine too. I'm just gonna ask you to close your eyes. Mm. And to just take a moment to let everything you've just heard, just let it integrate because there is a deeper wisdom in you that already knows this. Nothing I've said is new. It's written within the very fabric of life itself. This is even within the very fabric of space-time itself. And the way life evolves and you too. So just take a moment to bring your awareness within yourself and to feel within you these deeper codes of being and to connect within you with your unique seed, your seed code of life. How you yourself are an expression of this fundamental reality of life that is unified and whole. Connect deeply with your innate seed wisdom.
and you as the seed code of life also have an innate knowing of the conditions, of the principles, of the values that are required for the seed that you are to activate, to germinate, and to flourish. And as you connect with that knowing, just notice how life and the universe itself is sending its intelligence to you and its patterns, its future patterns and possibilities to support you. And how it's weaving together the intelligence and wisdom and love of each and every one of us here to create a collective field of knowledge, of wisdom, and of loving care. And as this weaving is taking place, it is from this fabric of our unity in diversity that the living constitution of seeds emerges. A constitution that is alive, that is alive, the codes of the cosmos and the wisdom of life. that serves our thriveability for each and every one of us. And now move with your hands in front of you as if you can touch and feel this constitution. So move with your hands in the space in front of you, feeling this constitution of seeds all around you. And as you connect with it, it starts to inform you. You become aware of its patterns, of its source codes, of its algorithms, of its values, of its moral compass, of its attractive qualities, of its social fabric. take a moment to be with this living constitution and send the pattern that's uniquely you, your gift to the world for this time, send it into the field. So with your innate wisdom, your inner coding, you also inform this living constitution. And feel now how this incredible constitution is coming alive by our collective wisdom, our collective intelligence, our collective abilities. And as it's coming in formation, we each have an intuitive knowing of the right wording, the right structure, the right encoding. And now sent into this collective space, your deep love and care as a steward for this founding moment as we are building also a new story. The seeds story of life. And 
now receive from this beautiful field all the support that you need to be in your right room for your deep flourishing. And feel how seeds is supporting you to thrive. beautiful flow of mutuality and mutual care. You may gently come out of this meditation when you're ready by opening your eyes, being fully present here and now. And if you want, you can take a few moments to write down anything that felt important to you. You can do so in the chat so we can harvest it. And with that, I will bring it back facilitation to Reiki. Thank you. I'm mindful that I don't talk too loud. <laughs> Annalos, that was incredibly beautiful. I'm so inspired every time I go through that journey. Um, thank you. I'm just going to give an extra moment for anyone who wants to write in the chat to share any insight, inspiration, any kind of wisdom that you're holding on to now. Um, you know, part of me that facilitates a lot of these meetings wants to run right to pulling up the document and you know workshopping that with all of you but i don't know if that's the most inspiring way we can spend the next 10 minutes um so what i really love is if anyone is feeling deeply inspired or wanting to share i'd love to give a handful of you one minute each to you know release your wisdom uh, essentially what I'm doing with these calls is there's going to be four of them this month and a lot of it is about bringing all the wisdom and the insight to the table that we need in order to build that constitution, that foundation of what this game is about. So it's going to be less about actually tweaking the constitution itself. We could do that outside of these calls. This is more of a space to really bring that wisdom and to, um, to be able to capture and harness that and harvest that like Anilo said. Um, okay, so that's enough with my intro to that. I'd love to pass it to anyone. I think I see a, a hand up with Stephen Gomes. So I will play a facilitator role. I'll keep everyone at one minute so you could be really smooth and you know quick through this. Um, so then after you've gone, just go ahead and pass it to somebody else who wants to go. And then I'll, I'll pause us when we're ready. Thank you, Raiki. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to share around the world. Uh, I had a very deep uh, conscious awareness of the awesome gift of consciousness of life that we all share together and somehow how that can be embodied in a written living constitution. Um, but th this awesome gift that we all share of being able to be aware uh, uh, that we are uh, both individual and at the same time connected uh, is something to me that has to be uh, somehow gone. We have to go beyond the limitations of words. Words are fragile. Um, words are, are, are powerful at the same time. And words are inadequate at the same time to fully express the love and connectivity of all of us. And, pierce the duality of, of seeming uh, uh, individual life that is not connected. We are connected. And I really appreciate Anilu's, uh meditation today. And I'm very, very uh, happy to be a participant, a humble par participant in this uh, magnificent uh, discussion to this morning, or for me anyway, this morning early morning. I'll pass it on to uh, uh, anyone else. Just jump in. Benjamin. Benjamin, just jump in. Oh, 
you know, I think we've all met here before. Um, and it's good to see us all in form. I'm glad we all decided to do this. Uh, we're creating the world we want. And I just want to thank everybody for fearlessly stepping into this and uh, being fearless of social disgrace, being fearless uh, uh, from death and uh, being able to step into that raw potential and let the constitution of your heart, the compass of your core principles direct to, um, to, to, to be comfortable in that void, to know that your heart can direct you and everybody else to, to serve life, to build this web, to know that you know, to self-select. And that's where we're at. Uh, we're, we're creating, we're creating this. This is, this is what the world needs. And, uh, I'm humbled by it. Uh, it it's like, I've seen this room before. Um, <laughs> but it was a, a, a pillar of clouds and everybody's face was all over the place. And by thought you could go zoom in. So maybe we can create that in virtual reality someday, but, uh, we're here, we're doing it. And, um, it's real, it's now, and it is in form. And uh, I'm with you, and it's good to be here. Would anyone else like to share into the space? Okay, you can also use the chat if you want something uh, recorded on record. So this is being recorded to share everything in the chat. I'm going to transcribe out and anything that deserves or wants or needs to be in the Constitution will find its way in there. Okay, yeah, so I'm just, uh, okay, oh. just going to jump, jump in if that's okay. If nobody yes, else please. is going. Um, no, I think it's a beautiful moment, um, so important. And the only thing I would like to mention is uh, maybe to give uh, more precision to the importance of a regenerative culture is uh, I've, I've found that um, what we are carrying and what is disconnecting us from ourselves and each other are the unresolved individual and collective traumas from the past. And the aim of regenerative culture is to, aim, is to, is to trigger this systemic collective and individual healing so that we can finally reconnect to ourselves and to the natural environment as well because it's part of of, of the principle so this is really so important and, and notably the fact that we are all recognizing that we are all coming from an heritage of trauma uh, um, because of the past that our ancestors have been through and the trauma that have been passed down generation after generation so yeah, I wanted to make that. Um, thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, Vladan, I have a, a hand up. Hey, th thanks a lot. So I just want to say the following. Um, I feel very, um, I have to say, uh, delighted and um, motivated to participate in uh, co-creating our constitution, partly because I used to teach about these things um, in relation to European governance, and when you speak about, let's say, constitutionalism of the, the European Union. And what I admire here is that we are creating a constitution that is quite weak in many ways, because, you know, when you say a constitution in sense of a nation state, it's about you know, representative democracy, it's about uh, electing a government. Uh, it's also, you know, things about deciding who, who can enter, you know, the country and so like migration. While we are actually creating like something unique, which is, you know, no government, which is decentralized. Uh, we are also including aspects such, such as, let's say, living in harmony with nature and, uh, you know, improving our planet, uh, including, you know, decentralized applications and blockchain. You know, this could help us with the rule of law system and smart contracts, like agreements between the community members. So I think this is actually very, you know, revolutionary because the institutions we have today, uh, as in Europe or other parts of the world, are kind of from the, you know, 19th century, the transformation from agricultural to industrial societies, you know, French Revolution, American Revolution, and so on. 
uh, now we are creating constitution for let's say post-industrial uh, human development so that's everything for me beautiful uh, thank you Fladan. ed hi there um thank you very much what a wonderful meditation and um I've been interested in um, the value of seeds in their material sense for a few years and we've been exploring that. And that's really led me to the power of the story around the plants and just wanted to share what a beautiful story I feel being birthed here and I'm really humble and grateful to be able to poke my head in from time to time and I hope that can grow and grow. So thank you very much. Wonderful to connect with everyone today. Beautiful. Thank you, Ed. Uh, William, uh, the last hand up. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to be here. Yeah, I just uh, bringing a reminder that this has never been done before. So uh, some hu humility, patience and tolerating mistakes that I'm sure we're going to make and that uh, one of the things I'm a steward. I'm, my name is Stuart. That's my so steward is, is part of my, my lineage and uh, that, that relates to me about responsibility. So everybody here present, we are we also responsible for our words, our uh, commitments, what we do and say. And, and the final thing is, is for me is about the verb to be. Because a lot of the time I hear this is that we we are, this is a game. This is this. This is that. So it, it, it can be all of these things. So how we put into words what, what cannot be put into words, it's, um, that's, that's our challenge and we're not going to get it perfect. So just, I think, humility and patience and tolerance of mistakes, that's all I uh, want to add. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Would you mind if I shared? Um, yes, the Mackenzie has his hand up and then Go with you next. Sorry. Reiki, good morning and good morning, everybody. I just wanted to jump in real quick and, uh, and say how excited I am for the progress of Seeds. Uh, recent conversation with Franz was, was just amazing. And, um, uh, you know, I, I wanted to talk real quick about the word regenerative um, because 10 years ago, uh, when we started introducing the only soil-based self-contained agricultural system uh, that grows in three dimensions and uses the power of gravity, um, everybody just kind of laughed, honestly, when we said regenerative. Uh, we, we literally had investors redline it out of our presentations. Uh, we had mission social impact investment groups tell us that sustainable was just too much for people to think about already and regenerative was, whew, that, that was whole next level things that, you know, we, we were just crazy to bring up with, with any real investors. And, um, and I can tell you 10 years later, um, those same people have, you know, walked back on stage confidently to, to tell everybody how regenerative they are, how their spreadsheets and their analysts are telling them that everything that they need, you know, to be regenerative in their impacts is, is working for them. And, you know, how this climate change thing's coming around and, you know, they have a regenerative carbon impact or, you know, what, whatever basically clinging to the concept of the word, um, you know, that, that there really is in, in the open market. And, you know, what I really want to do is ask everyone to stop and think about really tangibly, materially, what does regenerative mean? It, it means that we used something right? We extracted it. We, we, you know, made use of it. And, and then through some means, through some technology, through, through some wit, through some activity, through some action, we regenerate that, that thing into something that's useful. It, it's not passive. It's not something that your, your analysts include in your quarterly report and you get to high five your friends about. It means somebody actually has to do something. And for regenerative agriculture to actually happen, for shit to turn into strawberries, to turn back into soil amendments, there's some work there. 
maybe at a microbiological level, maybe at your level, but seeds is doing the doing. And, you know, bottom line, I feel like this is gas in the engine of the doers showing up to do the doing, to make that action happen that makes regeneration happen. Not just something that everybody sits on stage and smugly congratulates each other for because they figured out how to use the word. So anyway, thank y'all. Thanks, brother. Uh, I, I let that one go a little bit because regeneration is so foundational. Uh, Alex, I think that's it. And then we'll switch into the last part. We'll be mindful of the time we have here. Hey, how you doing? Um, feeling the feeling the nerves. It's a pretty magnificent task that um, the community is sort of taking on. It's um, I want to. I just want to speak into like the the needs of control and like if we're incentivizing like like what most of you guys said being careful where where the path could lead you and um be the 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 like the mental capacity for humans to think in the same way to con to create or change problems that like albert einstein said the same thinking can't always change the problem so um yeah and i wanted to learn more about the game and if there's like karma points involved or good standing and um like if it could turn into like where where definitively if we're on socialism if cap if this results in like losing of capitalism like will property have value in the future um do you know anything about the sdg 11 the sustainable community um constitution that's existing at the moment for sustainable cities and um, yeah, I'm really grateful to be here. Thanks. And sorry, that was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit, but we'll respond to all of those pieces. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, for this last part, I'm, I'm gonna speak for just a moment, but then put in the chats any questions you have and then we'll go into a Q&A session here real shortly. Um, some immediate reflections. Thank you all for sharing that. Again, this is being captured, so we'll be able to share this, articulate this, and build it into the Constitution. So we're not going to go over that document today. I say that we're doing that between these calls. Uh, the later calls, we're going to go more into depth and in actually going into the articles, discussing each one of the articles, and we'll work a little bit deeper into the Constitution as we go through this month. Um, that conversation is happening on the document real time right now, so we can keep that conversation alive. Um, most importantly, like again, setting the stage here, this constitution, the one that we're co-crafting right now, it's going to go up for a vote um, come November with our next release. If the date's not quite set yet, we're still going with flow, but at some point in November, we're going to finish this, put it up for a ratify, put it up for a vote. But what that also means is that anybody here can put up an alternative proposal, and we actually encourage that. It would be really nice to give a couple you know, alternative proposals out there that we can align around and then let the citizens kind of decide which constitution they want to follow. And getting into the metagame concept here, just planting the seed of an idea, there is future concepts where it's possible for us to have multiple constitutions that we're agreeing to. So we don't try to force everyone into one umbrella of a way of being, but many constitutions could be out there in the constitution marketplace, so to speak. And then there could be a badge saying which constitution you agree to. And then you could choose whether or not you want to engage with someone who's following that constitution. So we give people much more flexibility to move through different you know, organization structures that way. Um, I say all of that to say, we're not trying to create another dogmatic system here. You know, Seeds, it's not about becoming the next mega organization. It's not about creating a new world order and pushing everyone under one banner. It's about giving us more flexibility and more freedom to co-create the civilizations that we're a part of. I also say that because this constitution is a living document. We're not going to get it right the first time, and we're not meant to. We're meant to just get the MVP version out there, and then as we're co-creating it and co-living it together, we're going to keep co-evolving it. Um, that's probably most pertinent to the game guide. So I realize a lot of you, you're looking at this 98-page document or however many pages it is now. It's a little bit overwhelming. 
So we're going to focus on during these calls this month is really the first 20 pages. Feel free to go through the rest of the document and give feedback on any of those protocols and we'll engage with you there. But what's really important is that we actually get the intention and the purpose and the soul behind what this is about and then articulate that into the first 20 pages. And then how we go about creating that is the part that's going to be ongoing. Um, because the game guide itself and how the rules play, we're not really going to know how to evolve that until we're in the game. So once we're actually playing through it and things are happening and we're experiencing it real time and we're wanting to evolve it, that's where I think a lot of the action is going to happen in evolving the game itself. All right. So what I'd really also love to accomplish with these calls this month is for us to get a good understanding of what this game is and how we're playing it. So that's some of the discussion or some of the questions that uh, we sent out in that email that a lot of you were already having is related to how do we co-govern right now and how do we play this game? So before I transition into those, you know, answering some of those questions, I'd love to open it up one more time if anybody has any other wisdom they wanna share into the space right now. Yeah, hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, hi, Franz. Hi. Um, just want to honor us all and one. Um, thank you so much. Um, just had something come through about the Constitution. I think it was Stephen that mentioned um, the power and limitation of language. And there was something around um, how can we communicate um, resonance in the constitution and you know one of the things that occurred to me was whether how can we code for that there's there's using the language but also um something around sound and visuals right if we're looking at new paradigms and you know thinking back to what Lou said about nature some of these transmissions um you know whether you want to get super technical and say okay how do we get and people reading through this in a theta state for absorption. So can we incorporate sound or visuals as well as a wording around it that is more precise? Um, because I think, you know, to your point of taking this to a next level shift and looking at new paradigms, well, these are kind of like old forms of communication. So it's just throwing that out there and seeing if that resonates. It'll... It does resonate on all three levels of the meaning. Uh, we're going to let Anna Lose actually answer this one. Yes, <laughs> it's beautiful and it aligns perfectly with a conversation I had with Reiki on that. Um, in one of the initiatives we're working with, which is creating an earth song um, to bring humanity together around the universal language of music and sound. Um, the man who was doing all the sound production is Alan Howard. He was the producer of all the Star Wars um, sound effects and he studied the mathematics of the pyramids, both the Mayan as well as the Egyptian. And, I asked him if he would be willing um, with us all here to create these amazing um, sound activation codes um, that you can be in, seated into the, the technology that, for example, if you have to make a decision or you have to make a vote that there is a sound coherence pattern that brings you into coherent consciousness state uh, and that you then, you know, casting that vote or taking that action really from that regenerative place of consciousness itself using sound as the trigger for and facilitating that process you can build in also song of course with that as well as nature sound so absolutely friends love it <laughs> and along that vein it's uh one of the beautiful reasons i'm so glad i'm allowed showed up to this to start this off with a, a coherence generating and meditation and this is actually something that Analos has so graciously offered to record such a session, about two or three minutes, and we'll add it to the co-op section of the passport so that it's an invitation for people as we go in there to start, you know, entering into a state of governance and co-governance that we first have that invitation to step into a more grounded space of connecting to that, you know, intelligence that wants to come through. And there's a lot that we can do with sound. And yeah, we're exploring that very deeply. So thank you, Franz. That's, that's so pertinent. Um, so I'm going to jump into just answering the questions real quick and see if we can get through these within the last eight minutes. And then the people who have to go have to, and then we might extend a few more minutes for some more Q&A for those who want to stick around. Um, so one of the first questions is, 
You know, it's on the ecosystem rewards. Can we really just create new seeds when the community votes when we have a need? How do we ensure the value stays stable? So, you know, a lot of people are tapping into it and it's hard to quantify this economy of abundance that we're stepping into and what that actually means. So for people who are really left brain thinking, I can help ground this really quickly. And it's that networks gain more value the more people that are part of that network. And when we're talking about financial systems, when you look at the daily active users, how many people are active in that financial system, um, it creates a tremendous amount of value. For example, Bitcoin has about a million daily active users and it's got about 150 billion plus market cap. So that translates to $150,000 per daily active user. Uh, it might be a little inflated. National currencies are anywhere from five to $50,000 per daily active user. So what does this mean? This means we can give a tremendous amount of value away to people just to bring them and invite them into this new system. So when we're talking about funding campaigns to give out gifts and we're talking about giving 20 to $50 away to people, that's orders of magnitude smaller than the value they could bring to the network if they're invited in a beautiful way. So I think we can enter into this new economy, not trying to think too um, scarce minded and being too closed with the proposals that we're passing. With that being said, we still wanna pass proposals that are designed to give out seeds to a wide number of people. It's not really within the seeds interest right now to fund a proposal if their intention is just to get $100,000 worth of seeds and try to sell. We want to fund campaigns where they're deciding, like, we want to activate our community. We want to invite people. We want to give this gift to a wide number of people. And that, that's kind of the things that we're wanting to fund right now. But ultimately, it's up to the citizens to fund whatever we choose. So let's use our own discernment there. Um, there's a lot of other economic protocols on the stability side. I have a, a few part series that I put together that gets into those economic protocols. I feel like they're pretty sound. It's taking the best of modern monetary theory and a few other um, practices and principles and weaving them together in a very beautiful pattern. Um, so I'd share that with the SEEDS community. We can dive into that and we can get a little bit deeper for those who want. Okay. Um, how do we make sure the platform will not be infiltrated by those who are still holding onto the old paradigm? How do we protect against a takeover or a shutdown? These are really intense questions, everybody. <laughs> you guys are going right to the heart of it. Huh? Um, there's a few ways. If we get into the constitution, there's a lot of protocols that we build into it to have this, um, you know, either proxy account, a fake account, or Civil attack, which is creating a whole bunch of fake attack accounts and trying to come in, or people who are just misaligned. So how we first and foremost address that, and it's just leading it back into tapping into this energy, is with who we're inviting in at this stage. So that is why seed is invite only. It's not to be elitist. It's just to make sure that people are inviting people who are aligned. That's also why there's a cost to invite somebody, so that we're not just inviting a wide number of people because there's a referral that we could potentially earn. It's more to invite people to who we feel like would be aligned to this movement right now. So that's probably the most principled way that we're gonna get the right coherence here. And already seeing by the tremendous amount of aligned wisdom that's showing up to this table and call, I feel like we're doing a really good job of that. And that's gonna be the first wisdom holders and citizens that our code is creating this game. So that we can continue to co-create in a way that's gonna create you know, more defenses and an immune system for us for how we can take on you know, potentially misaligned actors as they come out. Um, this is a longer question than I could answer, but if you do go through the constitution, it speaks to this very point several times throughout it, uh, at least in the game guide, so we can get into the finer details there. Um, another question, how can we reach citizens? How can we pre-contact the community to check whether our proposal has a proper chance of being passed? So this is more detailed with actually getting a proposal passed. And we have a Discord chat and we have a forum in the Passport. So if you have an idea, you wanna get the community involvement in that idea before putting it up to propose, take it to the forum, put up the idea there and then share with the community and Discord that you have a proposal idea you'd like some feedback on. Uh, it's pretty straightforward there or you can send a document to one of the ambassadors. They're pretty open to giving feedback um, or myself. Um, finally, how can I co-create? You're doing it right now. It's showing up to these calls. It's bringing your wisdom to the table. It's joining Discord. We're a very open and transparent organization, probably more so than anything that I've seen. So everyone has been welcome to this table to be able to co-create and find out what your passion is, the purpose is, and show up and add that to this party. So 
there are some other ambassadors out there that are online to help people through this process because it is a little bit radical where you can show up to a thing like this and actually be able to participate rather than just watching from the sidelines. So we understand that there's a learning process there and that's what the ambassadors are here to do is help people through that. Um, I got a direct question to me and then I'll pause for a second. And that's how do we you know, bring in the marginalized people? Um, there is a comment that it looks like this group here is pretty privileged. Uh, I think we're all incredibly privileged to be at this moment of life where we're able to rethink the systems that are in, we're inhabiting. Uh, so undoubtedly, uh, this is definitely a privileged group. How can we activate those who are more marginalized and who need our help? And that's a really beautiful question. And that's what I think we could be taking to the campaigns. So these are all ideas that could be answered in a million different ways. And this is why we have those seeds to give out as gifts. So for example, the World Indigenous Forum that's happening in November, and we're partnering with them to just give a gift for every person and every indigenous person who, well, everyone who attends that indigenous and all, we're gonna give them a gift of seeds. So that proposal is gonna go up in the co-op. I wanna make it for like 10 to $20. So if you'd like that idea, please vote it up. Um, you know, put that in there. Um, but that idea and many more like it are what we want. Another idea, and I think this is beautiful, so I'll share it, is places like Bali, they have two problems all at the same time. They have garbage and pollution everywhere and they're dealing with food crisis. So we wanna solve both of those. And how that looks is people get to donate to buy food for people in need. And when they donate, they earn some seeds. So we're actually subsidizing their donation. Donate $20 to food and we're gonna give you $20 in seeds. And then we have this food bank. And what we do is people are able to go into the environment, pick up plastic, come bring it to this food bank, and then they get paid in seeds for that plastic. And what they can do then is those seeds could buy food from the food bank or they can use it to go and make other purchases and they know they can buy food from the food bank. So we're starting a local food economy based off of cleaning plastic out of the environment and giving people food when we need it. Um, we're also partnering with upcycling to take that plastic, melt it down and make school chairs and other things of need and teaching people how to compost and how to make soil and trying to create this you know, local food economy where seeds is underpinning it. Uh, what this also serves is a, a stimulus into these economies. A lot of them are dependent on tourism, meaning they're dependent on new money coming into those communities. Um, all that means is we can do a new type of money, i.e. seeds. So what they need is a new type of currency, maybe it was dollars, it's just as fictional of a story as seeds can be. That currency can come in, give them that stimulus they need, and they can start trading again. So that's a really good example of what we're trialing here, and that's happening like right now, and we want to take that and replicate it everywhere. And that's where all of you can come in. Like this is open source, it's open. These you know, grants can go out to any of us. Any one of us can take this concept, bring it to our community and run a campaign there to help those in need. So that's a big part here. This is a massive mission that we're signing up for. And that's why I think we need everyone kind of activating and getting involved in that capacity to go out there and share this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pause and I haven't gone through any of the questions. So really what I wanna do is say, this is the hour. So if you have to go I totally honor that, and this is a moment for you to step off if that's what you need. But given how beautiful this is moving forward and I wanna hear more from you, I'm gonna extend this for about 20 more minutes and we can have a little bit of more Q and A during this time. So I'll look through these questions, but I would really love if someone has a question right now, if they just unmute themselves and ask it into the space. All right, I will, I will find one of these questions in, in this chat. Let's see, I'll go back a little bit. Hey, Reiki, I've got uh, something for you if you, picking me up yep um and given the importance of regeneration um in the whole mission um I'd like a bit of clarity on exactly how you're measuring uh what you refer to as biosphere contributions in the document um it seems to me that that is fundamental to to what the mission's about and with without clarity on exactly how you're going to measure and reward. It seems like a very vague term, difficult to, to really come to terms with. Right? One sees so much greenwashing and so on these days, it's, it's difficult to really 
analyze at the end of the day exactly how effective that biosphere contribution is. So I'd be interested to know what techniques you are going to have in place to really filter out the noise there and make that, that side of things effective because that is so fundamental. Uh, I absolutely love this question, and I'm going to I'm going to answer it meta, and then I'm going to answer it directly. The meta question is the seeds game is it's the blueprint, it's the skeletal structure of how we can design a new economic system. So when we say we can deliver value to organizations for contributing, that's just the blueprint, and we can design that. And I hope for us all of us to you know design that and add to it as we play this game. So it's meant to evolve. It's saying we can reward people for contributing. What does that mean? Right now, it's like helping us grow seeds. That's really where the rewards are focused on. But I really hope they don't stop there. I hope we get much more creative in how we want to distribute value. Um, so when you see the contribution score for organizations, people, and communities, those are heavily open for you know, evolving and adding more metrics to that. Um, for example, we want to reward bioregions based off of their regeneration and how well they're regenerating. That's not in it yet, but that's a, an idea that we're working through. Okay, so how we actually do biosphere, um, how do we track that? First, subjectively. So this is just, everyone gets to vote from an organization say, we think they're really regenerative, they're degenerative. So it's gonna take you know, collective assessment through rating. And part of that is also working with ratings agencies, for example, like Benefit Corp and someone's, um, some other examples where they have a greater voice because they go through a more rigorous process. So when they rate an organization, it's gonna be as if a thousand citizens had rated them. So that's in the game guide right now. Um, that thousand multiplier, that's up for evolution. Maybe it's a thousand multiplier, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 10,000. So that's for us to continue to talk about and tweak as we play this game. Um, what we're really, really interested in is objective metrics for regeneration. And that's where some of our alliances like Regen Network, who we're really excited to work with, because they can prove ecological state change and we can track some objective metrics of regeneration. Um, this is also where we're working with the donor economic model. We're trialing this out in Costa Rica, where we're taking in a lot more data to track regeneration, whether it's social regeneration, community regeneration, interpersonal regeneration, biosphere regeneration. I mean, we brought up regeneration, but that works on every single level. And I love that the donor economic model is getting closer to that. So when we can start weaving all of this in. So again, it's a skeletal structure designed to continue to bring in more wisdom and information as it becomes available. And as those things come online, which there's a lot, but beautiful. Um, okay, do we have any other questions? Can I ask a question? You certainly can. Yeah. Um, so I'm just here in Costa Rica, and I have a lot of I have a lot of questions, and I'm super grateful for this space. I just came in late, but Menta added me to the space. I'm I'm kind of on a mission to regenerate the planet here in Costa Rica and globally. And um, just curious to know, um, in terms of like partnering with other organizations, um, I'm a consultant for something called Oceanic Global, which actually helps businesses become more sustainable in terms of like reducing their plastic waste and everything. Um, and they have a lot of metrics. And this is something I'm looking at to like basically reduce plastic and then support the, the small businesses and local economies. So I'm wondering like, how seeds could play into that in terms of like um, businesses businesses could receive seeds or you know um, their their model and their program actually helps like in like every single item to to first switch to a sustainable alternative and then looking at like how we can replace everything in a certain restaurant or hotel or any kind of venue to become local and sustainable. Um, thank you. That's incredibly beautiful. Um, so what's happening in seeds is two things. We have an alliance share request where you see a little tag on the proposal that says alliance. That's a distribution of deferred seeds that goes to any organization that's requesting it. Um, it's up to the citizens to decide where these funds go. But either way, or any organization that's out there serving people or planet or in any way trying to make the world a better place, those organizations should, and we want them to, tell all of them to come right now, like, we want to get these alliance shares out ASAP, especially right now when the, the value of seeds is pretty low so they can capture the upside. So anyway, those alliance shares go to the organization. And then we have campaigns. These are liquid seeds that are available to spend and set out. That's for anything that we want to fund to support these um, initiatives. So what you just talked about is a perfect example of one, let's reward the organization doing that beautiful work. Two, then let's give them a campaign so that they can go in and 
you know, support that local economy, bring more currency into circulation and reward getting more plastic out of the environment and all those beautiful things they're doing. Um, so that's a perfect example of where we'd want to, you know, support them. But of course, again, this is up to the citizens. You know, I, I love this process. There's been a lot of things I've been championing that didn't go through and some things I didn't want to go through that did. Um, so ultimately, at the end of the day, it is up to all of us and all the citizens to decide, you know, what we wanted to give our funds to. Um, beautiful. Um, looking at the time, maybe we can do two more questions. Um, they don't have to be to me. So if you have a question for anyone else on this call, feel free to ask them, but I'm also happy to answer. Hey, Reiki, I would jump in and respond to a question from the chat about the uh, the bioregions and their own rules, um, as well as uh, circling back on around, uh, what regeneration uh, entails here, because you're, you're exactly right that the uh, game framework provides us with, you know, kind of a common uh, architecture, right, for this new language of value uh, that we're trying to learn to speak with one another. And um, I, I just wanted to share uh, briefly that uh, the bioregional cross-pollination circle and eco -map, uh, ecosystem mapping circles are uh, generating a lot of clarity around what that model kind of looks like on the, the, the bioregional or community scale. Uh, there's been a little bit of uh, friction with the term bioregion um, because that's uh, not usually the level at which we're operating. We need to go one click down into like community scale. Uh, but I, with my background in community currencies and digital marketplaces and uh, how we connect that up into, uh, you know, the, the capital paradigm that we're inheriting, but also the future capital paradigm that we're creating uh, with uh, DLT and, and blockchain technology uh, that allows us to uh, become much more free with how we decide collectively that something is of value to us and uh, that at the center of all of this is that key word of regeneration. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing many ecosystems uh, that I'm, I'm in, in touch with, uh, like seeds, uh, that are focused on that same term. And it kind of has a prescription, right, around like what, what, it, what are these activities that are uh, occurring in these locales? I mean, it's about coming together, it's about healing, and it's, you know, that, that can be applied to so many different problems. But at the, at the end of the day, once you strip away the specifics, right, you've got kind of this underlying data architecture or syntax of the language around, okay, we've got some problems that we're dealing with, right, in, in, in our community. We've got some ideas, some solutions that people have contributed. We're forming teams and coming up with proposals, validating those proposals, allocating resources, capital and otherwise, following through on execution and implementation, and then doing uh, you know, kind of a holistic value assessment from that point using uh, the, the Kate Raworth's donut economics model or the meta capital framework uh, is another one on that level. Um, so anyhow, uh, would love to uh, have more people uh, join us in those discussions if this is something that's of uh, particular interest of the place-based uh, approach here and how that translates into local seeds uh, in complement to the global ecosystem that we already have. Um, incredible, Scott. Uh, thank you. Yes, so please reach out to Scott. You can find him in Discord and you can be involved in that bioregion. We're looking for bioregional architects that people who want to set up their bioregions, kind of be the stewards of activating seeds, running campaigns and getting people, you know, going in this transition within their bioregion. Um, there's some good questions. One is about planting trees as a primary method of regenerating the rivers and forests. Yes, we actually just launched our first um, campaign to reward nonprofits, um, and that one is Forests Without Frontiers. So they're launching their fall campaign right now, and what it looks like is we are giving 20 pounds worth of seeds for every 20 pounds that you donate to planting trees. So you can buy seeds if you're looking to do that by helping plant trees. They do it in an incredible way because they're not just planting you know, the same monocrop timber to make it cheaper for logging companies to go in there and not have to replant, which unfortunately a lot of reforestation projects are doing, so something to look out for. 
but they're actually making sure the land they're reforesting is protected. They sign protection agreements indefinitely for people that they're putting those forests on. They're making sure they're biologically diverse. They're involving indigenous peoples into that process. I mean, they're just doing it so beautifully. So we're really, really stoked to be working with them. Uh, we're going to be relate, like weaving our relationship deeper. Where you're going to be able to donate to planting trees right within the app, and some cool things will happen if we do that. Uh, but that's coming later. Don't get too excited. There's some technical details there. Uh, okay, so I know Jess had a question. I'll pass it to her real quick, and let's try to run through these really fast. And get I would actually say what Scott said and what you just said took care of me. I know what to do next, so I'm great. Thank you. Excellent, uh, Julio. You had a question. Hi there. Um, so yeah, regarding bioregions, uh, the, there was a rule in the constitution that you can associate to a bioregion. And once they have a, a more than 144 members, they, they become active. But I was thinking since a bioregion has a, a center point in a GPS center location, right? Maybe the bonus that you get for trading locally in the bioregion and the extra seeds that you receive could be mapped according to your distance from this GPS central. Because otherwise we could have a bioregion somewhere that's very famous and everyone around the world just joins that bioregion because you know you can get a lot of bonus there. So maybe have this local uh, uh, presence getting close to the center thing and maybe the radius could change. I know this is kind of complex, but just thinking out loud that maybe we could have um, more rules to evolve bioregions according to locations as well. If we have locations based on uh, the the transactions where you did the, the transaction, you record the location. So yeah, this, this uh, may be a suggestion for the future. I, I absolutely love that. Um... So we're trying to not be dogmatic with anything at seeds. So, you know, there's this bioregion concept. Everyone has a different, you know, way of looking at a bioregion. Every country has a different way of identifying bioregion too. So it's very difficult to top down distribute that. So we thought, you know, we'd let it organically emerge from the bottom up where people could self-select what bioregion, they can call it whatever they want, they want to be a part of. And then we have to self uh, accept that with 143 other citizens saying, yes, we think that's a bioregion, we're a part of it. Some really cool things about bioregions, if you're part of the same bioregion, you get a bonus when you're exchanging with each other. This is our way of like trying to incentivize and reward local foods or local economies being set up. Local food, definitely, but also just local economies in general. Um, so either way, this is, again, it's a blueprint. What else do we want to reward happening in the bioregional level? Like, what could we do with that information? How could we build that into our economy to better meet the outcomes of the constitution we're putting forward to today? So again, regrounding what we're doing here, the constitution setting out why we're showing up, like what we're trying to achieve together is fundamental because the game is just here to support that outcome. So the game, again, how it's designed right now is like version 0.01. .01. Like it's, it's economically sound. That's all we really considered from the foundation is like how do we get basic economics and basic regeneration baked into the base layer but now it's designed to evolve so much more complexity as we bring our wisdom and you know, co-creation to the table. Um, there's another question about Eleanor Ostrom's governing the commons. Absolutely, a uh, huge supporter of her that influenced my life tremendously, uh, as well with Charles Eisenstein and Sacred Economics and The More Beautiful World, Our Hearts Know Impossible, Ascent of Humanity, all those books definitely read. Um, anyway. Uh, okay, let's do one more question and then let's close it out and be respectful of the time here. All right. I got one. I got it is. Okay, so uh, given the potential, like we were just mentioning, creating that, that, that base structure, will seeds be able to take on massive adoption? Right now we're kind of wrestling a little bit with complexity and adoption for the people coming on. So if all of a sudden we were set, we're launched, we're live, we're global, um, what type of scalability, mass adoption can C take? Or is there uh, a plan to to create that that system for just like 
millions. So where are we at with that? Um, yeah, there's always scaling issues as we go up and we're gonna have to co-evolve them as we go up because that scaling issue is on so many levels. I mean, the tech side, uh, the customer support side and also the governance side and what that looks like. Um, so how we're doing this game is gonna change quite rapidly as we scale. Um, actually, I think we can have a real quick tech answer from Nick. He could speak to the smart contracts and what they can support. What's up, Nick? Hey guys, I'm Nick. I'm doing the smart contracts at Seeds. And um, yeah, Benjamin, great question. Uh, we have thought about it a lot. And I would love to have this problem of having way too many users. So that's the first answer. That's an awesome problem to have. Um, I'm hoping to get this problem really soon. <laughs> and the second answer is that we, we have done everything we can to make it, you know, okay for about maybe a million. And then we have reached out to many different projects and crypto projects uh, to see, and, and we are constantly exploring solutions, how we can scale to billions, basically. Yeah. And, and as we scale, more resources come in to support that. If we got to a million users, we'd be as active as Bitcoin. And if we're like mirroring market caps here, that means our value went up 500x. So if that was the case, we'd have many more resources to get all the infrastructure we need. And so anyway, that it's a self-correcting problem. As we scale, we get more resources to support. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to leave that as all the questions. You are all incredible. I do want to hold space one more time for not a question, but if anyone has a statement they want to put into the space so that I'm not the one ending this call. And then whoever takes that opportunity, say goodbye and love you to everyone. So I love you all. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to stop talking until someone else does. Would you like me to do a close, Ricky? You're incredible, Susan. Yes. We are here, we are here, keepers of the garden, we are here, when if not now, who if not we, who if not all of us, we are here. We are here, keepers of this garden. We are here. I love you all. You're incredible. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Discord and the Passport, getting this out there. If you want to come create with us, um, we're opening up more people. So come on in, come play. Let's build this together. Love you all. Love you Bye, all. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot, guys. Lots of love. Bye, everybody. Thanks a lot. Let's make it happen.